Hi Cancer, welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Rena here. So this is really strange. I completed about half of your reading yesterday and I had to stop the recording and so I left all the cards on the table because I thought maybe I'd be able to combine two files and um, there's not uh, the YouTube editing function anymore so I had to find out if I could do it online and I couldn't find any programs um, that I could use for this purpose anymore I used to be able to do so. So maybe in the future I'll be able to edit it and also combine uh, files. But in any case, I thought that I had the cards out on the table to do it over again. And now my table is completely clear. So unless I just did it, you know, unconsciously, I don't know what happened. I'm assuming that's what, what occurred. But it's really strange out here. I'm recording this on October 30th, and so we're already well into the sign of Scorpio. And just the, <laughs> the vibes that I'm getting are very intense. And, not, and I don't think this is just because we're in Scorpio, because I've been feeling this all throughout o October. I don't think October was necessarily an easy month for many people, judging on how I felt with people's expressions on the street and what have you and just in my own life how I felt so it would be interesting to know how you guys handled October but um, this reading is for November and December 2017 for cancer a general look at your money prospects job prospects or career or what, what have you, work. And hopefully you can get some good messages from this because I'm going to be using oracle cards. I'm not going to use any tarot cards for your reading. I'm going to be picking some oracle cards. Two of them have an earth connection. One is Native American. The other one is just called Earth Magic Oracle. And in addition to that, I'll pick two additional cards and but first I'm going to talk about some of the transits that are occurring for you in November and December and uh, I thought I had the uh, page open to it I guess I didn't so pardon me for one second as I look at my notes and uh, okay so during the month of November, Mars is going to be in your fourth house of home and family that you happen to rule Cancer. So it's in the sign of Libra. And Mars is the god of war. So in the house of home and family, um, why am I even bringing this up if this is a career reading and a prosperity reading? Because one area that people prosper from deals with uh, family, uh, money, or real estate. That could be the fourth house as well. With Mars there, there could be some kind of fight going on regarding some kind of uh, estate, but particularly it would be an actual house. It's possible that you're just renovating your house because Mars can be like this active, maybe tearing it down and things like that. Um, and even the, uh, even could be something where you are actively pursuing something regarding a house. Maybe you are trying to buy a property and you're and you're really involved with it. I don't know, but there's something that indicates a lot of activity around home and family. Um, and the other big news in November is that there's a lot of very auspicious energy in your fifth house that includes besides falling in love and procreating includes creative projects as well as um, home business which is a creative project okay now you have the Sun there at the time of the new moon on November 18th you have the Sun there Venus which can bring money Jupiter 
and then you have that new moon, which is a be begin a new beginning. So that's very auspicious, and um, so I think that's I think that really bodes well for anybody who has wanted to start a business. That might be something, and and if you're a cr creative person like an artist, definitely don't allow this Jupiter transit to go by without really upping your game. Maybe you're the kind of person who is good at painting, but you've kind of let it fall to the wayside. And perhaps you should be engaging in that and not thinking of it in terms of dollars and cents. Oh, well, what is this going to get me? This isn't going to pay my bills. Well, how do you know that? Do you know that that's not going to happen down the line? But you have to put energy into something to see the results. And with cancer, one of the things that I think can um, stymie your growth is the belief that everything has to everything has a price that you know in terms of its worthwhileness if, if that's a word worth worthwhileness in terms of it being worthwhile okay so that sounds kind of bad but I don't mean it like that I think that uh, Capricorn your opposite sign might be more overtly like that I think for you you're just thinking in terms of financial security. And if something is a little bit iffy, like being an artist, then you may tend to downgrade it because you think that it could threaten your security. So it's about that delicate balance between taking good care of yourself and not doing, you know, taking foolish risks and then being too conservative or too fearful to just kind of um, step out and step out in, uh, in faith and do something. Now, I created uh, affirmations for every sign, prosperity affirmations. And for you, I created this one, Cancer. The universe has my back. Any questions? <laughs> and the reason I, I put it that way is precisely uh, due to what I was just talking about, where if you believe that the universe has your back, that's it, end of story. And you don't have to like still um, fret about it. But usually people are somewhere in the middle. They kind of are like, yeah, I, I kind of have faith, but I'm not sure and I need more reassurance. And you don't have to be a cancer person to feel like that. I think it's actually pretty normal because most people, they want to have stability in their lives and anything that is the unknown factor can be quite daunting. But maybe taking baby steps, if you are thinking of starting a new business, maybe just do it on the side. And you don't have to put all your eggs into one basket in terms of being able to support yourself right off the bat. Now in terms of, uh, let me see if there's any other... Yeah, there's some other transits I wanted to talk to you about. You're going to have some sixth house activity too, because the sun goes into Sagittarius, which is your sixth house, on November 21st. And Saturn is in that sixth house, and it has been for two and a half years. It's going there until the 20th of December, and then it's going to be in your seventh house of committed partnership, but also other types of partnerships. So client, um, what do they call it? Um, Owner-client relationships. I can't think of what you would be if you had a business and you had a client. I mean, that's really weird. But, um, you know, just uh, your relationships with one-on-one uh, -on -one that have to do with your work as well. And the other thing that I think is noteworthy is that Uranus is in your 10th house in the sign of Aries. And Uranus has been in the sector for several years as well. I think it was 2011, but I'm not 100% sure on when it, when it went there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's going to be going into Taurus I believe sometime in, in um, March or May of 2018 and then go back into 
go back into Aries. And finally, for good, go into Taurus in 2019. So Taurus is your 11th house, and that will be very interesting as well because you may have some sudden breakthroughs in terms of things that you've wanted for a long time. But in the 10th house of career, especially for a sign like Cancer, it can be kind of unsettling to have Uranus there because there may be a lot of twists and turns related to your career. Uranus is an erratic energy. Uranus brings surprises. And um, while some signs may welcome Uranian energy more than others, uh, Cancer likes to play it safe. And so anything that is unpredictable will be automatically deemed a threat. And so it's very important to be flexible, be um, confident in the belief that all is well and all will remain well. Do not overreact. And the, the thing that cardinal signs tend to do when they, like, you know, you're a cardinal sign, tend to do when they feel threatened is to double down on control. And that is a big no-no because there's um, the cardinal signs are very good at acting, taking action, not just sitting there talking about something, running their mouths, or just remain, remaining rooted in place and not changing. You're capable of um, initiating action and you're capable of changing. But by the same token, you don't necessarily like it when you are forced to do something. You will double down to try to make something happen by taking more action and more action instead of realizing when there is a certain resistance to whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. So an example I would give in personal relationships is when you try to make friends with or to romantically engage somebody and they either seem disinterested or whatever they they aren't um, reciprocating and instead of just like saying okay um, I guess that person isn't ready for a relationship you may try to um, call them twice as much that's where that clingy behavior of cancer comes from but the, the same thing can apply for your career anything where you feel out of control, you may try to double down. And th this is very important that you not do that, that you surrender. You know, I think about the hangman in the major arcana. It's all about knowing when to be passive and knowing when to be active, surrendering, and not thinking that surrender means I quit, because it doesn't. Okay. Okay. So I'm done with that, and now I'm going to pick a few cards for you. I'm going to start with the Native Spirit deck. And um, Native Spirit, Earth Magic, and Keepers. Keeper of the Light? Keepers of the Light. <laughs> I've gotten this card so many times, and there must be a reason, right? Great mystery. Um, there must be a mis uh, <laughs> mystery. There must be a reason why people need to really uh, realize that this is part of life and this is what God is all about. I think that's kind of what I was just saying, is that um, I mentioned this with another sign that sometimes in my private readings, I have people who will just say, uh, you know, when they're... When they're telling me what they want me to focus on, they'll say, am I going to get the job? Am I going to, is, am, you know, is he or she going to come back to me? Is this going to happen? They ask yes or no questions. And even if you were to go to somebody who bills themselves to be a psychic and ask the same question, I think it would be really unwise to just take at face value what somebody else tells you is going to happen. I would never do that. I do not do that kind of thing because I don't think that it's possible for anyone to tell you what is going to happen in your own life 
but even more so, I want to know why a person wants to know what is going to happen to them. Whatever happened to the great mystery of life? I always say that I think life is this juicy novel, and I can't wait to see what happens next. But do I want somebody to tell me the ending of the book? That makes no sense. But it's not even like that. I think we write the chapters of our book. 